Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna be showing you how to voodoo floss your elbow pains away. But before we get into that, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content like this. Ready? Let's get into it. So today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to fix those elbow pains that you're having. That could be golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, snapping triceps, any of those soft tissue tension related problems at the forearm and above in the biceps and triceps. We're gonna take care of all of them with one little tool here, Voodoo Floss. And you've seen it before in my videos, you'll continue to see it again. I've got it linked down below. I use Rogue Fitness Voodoo Floss. Seems to be the best that I've come across so far. So get your hands on some. It can be a nice quick fix to some very small issues that you might be having as far as aches and pains go. But before we get started with our mobility session today, I want you to take a moment and drop by the description to grab your free copy of Recalibrate. And these are my nutrition guidelines for mobility and human performance. It's a free information packed PDF that will help guide your mobility from the inside out. Yep, that's right. So we're looking at decreasing inflammation in your body, improving cellular health, and helping your body function at its highest level by eating the right way to help those things actually improve. All right, now let's go ahead and take care of those elbows. So we're gonna start by first wrapping the forearm over the elbow into the bicep here. So I only need one wrap, we're gonna do one arm at a time today. And remember, we only wanna keep it on about five minutes, so we're not gonna be spending terribly too much time on this. Uh, we're doing five minutes per side about. But the easiest way to do this for yourself here is actually keep the band rolled, hang half or portion of the band, the end of the band, over the forearm where we wanna catch it. So I'm trying to catch right about here, that meat of the forearm, just before I get into the elbow, because that's where a lot of the issue is occurring with those soft tissues from the south side of the arm there. Once I get enough wrap there, I'm gonna actually pin that band against my body until I can get my first wrap trapped under itself. So the first wrap gets trapped by itself, and then from there I'm covering half the band over itself with about six to eight on a scale of 10 in tension. So it should feel like it's uh, compressing pretty tight. Once again, remember that you do want to have what we call tiger stripes or lines in your arms from that band's compression after we're done with this and once we release it. So I'm going all the way over covering all this, not leaving any gaps, making sure that there's no spaces here until I run out of band in that bicep, which should end up maybe about midway or at least covering the low end of your biceps here. Once you get to the end of that band, fold it like a hot dog, use one finger to pull up the bottom portion of the last wrap, and then tuck the end of your hot dog underneath there. Okay, the very first one we're gonna start with today is gonna be from our back, we'll get right into it. What I wanna do is roll those shoulder blades as far as I can down and back underneath me. I'm gonna flex the abs. I'm gonna drive my elbow into the floor and I'm just gonna start doing some bicep curls here. And I wanna hit every type of curl. So I'm doing a regular supinated grip. I'm gonna do a neutral grip and I'm gonna actually do a reverse grip or pronated grip. And I wanna just challenge that range of motion there. So I can use my free hand to actually push passively into that a little bit further each time. Now it might be a little uncomfortable depending on the direction and where your tension are in, is in that tissues as far as you're gonna feel a lot of compression in the soft tissues right at the elbow joint there. Once again, from Voodoo Floss, we get a nice benefit of gapping technique. We get the benefits of blood flow restriction and we get the benefits of self myofascial release. So it's a nice little trifecta on that. Okay, just gonna do a couple of those, maybe five or six each position. Then I'm coming to my hands and knees. What I wanna do is spread those fingers, I'm gonna plant those hands, and I'm gonna practice creating a torsion effect from my hand up into my shoulder. 
So I'm rotating my elbows. If you watch my free arm, it might be easier to see, but my elbows are gonna point out and then I'm gonna rotate them in. And that rotation should go from my wrist all the way into my shoulders and upper back. So you should feel your armpits tightening up, your elbow pit will face forward once you actually get into that end range of motion, which is external rotation of our shoulder. This is where we really wanna practice getting into. And part of this might be really difficult for you to begin with. If this is challenging, this is part of your problem right here. If you lack the ability to create that torsion, you're probably not very stable at the shoulder itself, okay? I'm gonna turn those fingers back toward me this time. Sit to the heels. I wanna keep my shoulders down and back, so I'm making sure I'm not shrugging or rounding at the chest and shoulders there. Very good. And in the last position, I'm going on the back of the hands here. Once again, rotating the shoulders down and back, elbow pits faced forward, and I'm really trying to straighten out those arms as much as possible. You should have a mat for this one. If you don't, use carpet at least, something soft underneath the back of the hands there. That's gonna help. Okay, and the very last one we're gonna do, I'm actually going down to my belly. I'm gonna start by placing my thumb, fist, thumb down into the floor, and I'm gonna rotate my left leg toward my right arm here, which is wrapped. Now what I'm gonna do while I'm back here is actually flex my triceps as tight as I can for 10 seconds and release. So we're doing a little bit of a PNF technique here to get those soft tissues to help release around the elbow itself. Now once I do about five to 10 of those flexes, I'm gonna go palms down, flat palm, same flex. Squeeze the triceps. And if you can't figure out how to squeeze your triceps here, this is something we need to work on as far as your muscle dynamics go. We need to be able to flex those triceps with a fully extended arm with the arm in this extended position to the back here. Shoulder blades are on my back, nice and tight. Good, and then one last one we're gonna do. I'm gonna actually go into a bent position, 90 degree angle at the arm. Same thing, flex and release, flex and release. And this one, I should be getting a pretty big stretch actually up at the pec, releasing that pec a little bit. Very good. Now you can also do, say, elbows really bother you during push-ups. I would say if you're doing that, you can add that in. Hanging is also beneficial, so if you have a bar nearby, you can add a hang in there from your bar with that single arm and actually just kind of rotate around while you're hanging as well. So those are two other things that you could add in to help with this. So we're gonna release this arm. And I'll see if I can give you guys a pretty good view here of the actual change. So you'll see the blood flow start to come back in to my uh, forearm and elbow there. Look at the color difference in my hands. You can see my uh, floss band left some lines. That's how I know I had a decent amount of tension and compression on there. All right, go ahead and switch to the other side. We'll get that other arm going. I always like to rewrap the band before I do that. So I'll rewrap that. We'll rejoin each other in a moment here. All right, ready? Got it wrapped. We're going into that next set here. So I'm going to my back again to start. Once again, rolling those shoulder blades down and back, getting the elbow into the floor, getting my butt tight, keeping my stomach tight, going into those three different flexes, bicep curls here. So supinated, neutral, and then pronated. And just kind of feel around which of those positions speaks to you most. You might want to revisit that one a little more frequently than the others. If there's tenderness at the tissues that surround the elbow there specifically. So there I'm getting some bicep tendon. Once again, use that free arm to help go passively into a little bit further range of motion.
All right, and we're gonna switch to that kneeling position once again. So, hand spread, rotate those elbows. So I'm gonna elbow points out, torque at the shoulders, nice tight armpits, tight stomach, elbow pits forward. I'm just gonna test how far I can rotate in this each time. Good, flip those fingertips back toward you. Sit back toward those heels. Get the chest out, get the shoulders down and back. Okay, last one from this position. Back of the palms down. Shoulders down and back, elbows straightened out as much as can. Very good. And then lastly, down to the belly here. Go in with the fist, thumbs down first. Rotate the leg over. Flex those triceps. Take a look at the back of my arm here. It's driving the pit of my elbow into the floor each time. Okay, palm to floor. Same thing, flex those triceps. And then lastly, bend that elbow. Get that big pec stretch. Flex into the floor and release. All right, very good. Remember, add that little bit of a hang, do a push up, or you can specifically use whatever motion is bugging you the most and use that to actually floss while you're performing that exercise, obviously at a lighter weight or a lower intensity. All right, and there you guys have it. An all-in-one elbow problem fix right there. Do that as regularly as needed. Now that's not the complete fix, but it is a good solution to the soft tissue issues that you guys might be having. The complete fix would look something like figuring out what's going wrong with your movement patterning that's causing you to have this elbow pain in the first place. So usually it's gonna occur somewhere at the wrist or up at the shoulder where I either lack mobility at the wrist in order to generate torque all the way up the arm into the shoulder, or I lack the ability to stabilize my shoulders well and my elbow's getting torqued in the middle somewhere because of either that wrist or shoulder once again. So if you need help figuring that out, make sure you take a moment and drop by my website, grab yourself that free strategy call, and we'll get you headed in the right direction in no time. If you guys like this video, make sure you take a moment and give me that fat thumbs up, share it with a friend because you know they need this too. They could always benefit from more information. And leave a comment below letting me know what kind of elbow issues you've been dealing with. Medial epicondylitis, lateral epicondylitis, uh, golfer's tennis elbow, or um, if it's that snapping tricep, whatever it might be, let me know what you got going on and we'll see if we can address it a little bit more specifically for you. If you have not already, take a moment, hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on future content like this. I wanna thank you guys for watching today. We'll see you next time.